All right, while we're here dealing with all new terminologies and this complex exponential, let's go ahead and dive on in to this uh, formula for a function of z of t, uh, which is tilde f of z of t is equal to negative infinity to infinity integral uh, of a tilde uh, as a function of k e to the i k z minus omega t dk directly from the wave equation by separation of variables. All right, so let's dive on into the solution. We're used to separation of variables by now, thanks to chapter three. And uh, this is all prepping you for a quantum mechanics course, of course. Uh, you'll see it again with the wave equation for sure. Uh, but nonetheless, we look for solutions of the form z f of z of t is equal to capital Z as a function of z and t as a function of t. Again, this is assuming a linear equation and separable. So plugging this in uh, and taking the derivatives, we see that we get uh, t times d squared z over dz squared is equal to 1 over v squared z d squared t over dt. Again, note that the partials go to total thanks to the form of the solution we're looking for. And if we divide through everything by z of t, what we see is that we get cancellations and we have all z's on the left-hand side and all t's on the right-hand side. The left-hand side depends only on z and the right-hand side only on t. So both must be a constant. We'll call that constant negative k squared. Looks familiar. So if d squared z over dz squared is equal to negative k squared times z, we know this is a second order equation, and it'll take the form of z of z, capital Z of little z, is equal to a e to the i k z plus b e to the negative i k z. Similarly, if we have a constant, a new constant k v squared times t for the dt squared uh, term, then we get t, capital T of little t is equal to c e to the i k v t plus d to the d times e to the negative i k v t. And uh, now we've got to do a little more work on these definitions. Uh, the tilde notation tells us we want the real part. So let's take a note here that k must be real, or else z and t, capital, blow up. With no loss of generality, we can assume that k is positive. Um, we did, again, as a physical system, we have to use we have to get rid of extraneous solutions, and that's what the uh, real part is doing here. So we say that z f of z of t is equal to capital Z capital T, and if that's the case, we found the solution forms, and now we just uh, multiply them across and distribute and distribute them. So what we're left with, and a little bit of renaming is A1 with the A and C term, and what it looks like, yeah. A2 with the A and D term, A3 with the B and C, and A4 with the B and D term. Okay, so we know the general linear combination of separable solutions is therefore F of Z of T is equal to uh, integral from zero to infinity, bracket A1 of K, E to the I K Z plus omega T, since kv is equal to omega, and then we just uh, take every uh, part of the above, and put it into the integral, so we have a1, a2, a3, a4, everything like that, and now instead of kv, we have omega t, where omega is equal to kv as stated, and we can condense this by doubling the bounds on the integral with a negative infinity. So to do this, we need to allow k to run negative while omega is equal to absolute value or magnitude k, v remains positive. With this modification, the first and third terms combine and the fourth and, and the second and fourth term combine. Okay, so that absolute value saves us some work and we see that f of z of t is equal to negative infinity to positive infinity and a rule of course a1 k e to the i k z plus omega t plus a2 k e to the i k z minus omega t dk. This works because in the end, we shall only want the real part of f. It suffices to keep only one of these terms since k goes negative, 
both terms include waves traveling in both directions, again, because of the way uh, that complex exponential works into sine and cosine. And the second is traditional through, and second is traditional, though either would do. Specifically, the real part of F is equal to the real part of A1 uh, cosine KZ plus omega T minus the imaginary part of A1 sine uh, uh, KZ plus omega T, and then same thing for A2. So we see that um, the only the real part here is the cosine part, since uh, we have sine e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So the real parts of the cosine, and we know the cosines are even. So with that, we could put a negative into the argument of cosine, and it'd be the same thing. And this would combine with the third uh, cosine kz minus omega since the negative k is picked up on the other end, other half of the range of integration, and the second sine kz plus omega t is equal, well, as an odd function, is equal to negative sine of negative kz minus omega t, so the double negatives cancel, due to being odd, and this combines with the fourth for the same reason. So the general solution for our purposes can be written in the form of the tilde f z of t is equal to negative infinity to positive infinity integral a tilde again for the real part e to the i k z minus omega t dk again kind of hand wavy but this is all thanks to the complex notation and complex uh, exponential.